This is the um, first part of a four-part series on how to use the Grass Valley um, switching panel to control uh, ATEM video hubs. Now these video hubs that we can control can be either the really older uh, uh, workgroup video hubs all the way through to the full broadcast video hubs. Here in this demonstration I have um, a full broadcast video hub um, there and I also have another um, video hub there which is the uh, workgroup video hub. The workgroup video hub's got 12 in 12 out um, and it's also got a built-in processes called frame store and down convert. Now they are not controllable with um, the latest video hub firmware but they are controllable if you use the older versions of the firmware which I have and I am in fact using those workgroup video hubs um, on um, uh, in my in my setups and I'll just show you over here um, I have a workgroup video hub sitting there um, and it's got a built-in um, frame store that you can put uh, superimpose um, graphics which you can put any kind of graphic even a full screen graphic over the top of your picture so it gives you a really good access for downstream doing a, an ultra downstream key on top of your whole ATEM output uh, but as I said, this particular software firmware does not exist in the later um, Blackmagic firmware. I don't know why. Um, I've asked a few times, but I've never really been given a, an answer that would satisfy the, the question. Um, but what I've done with this particular interface for the video hub for the Grass Valley panel is that I've actually made it so it's compatible with both or all versions of their firmware so this is not firmware specific it'll auto configure knowing the the firmware so you will be able to access your frame store and your down convert on your older workgroup VO hubs um, and, and still maintain all their functionalities and then you can also connect it to the um, broadcast video hubs or any of the later um, IP video hubs and you still get the same control. But this video, I'm just going to quickly talk just the overview, which I'm doing now, and just talk about how to do the initialization. Um, now, the like most things on this panel, all the extra stuff that's not specific to doing fast on air control is, is done in color one, two mode and using the shift button and any one of the 10 pattern buttons will do different functions. Um, in, in the specific case we're talking about, we're going to be doing shift and eight because you've probably never seen a shift and an eight before, but eight is all the video hub control. Um, when we use, um, when we want to use the video hub to switch video hub um, sources from destinations, you use that particular button combination, which we'll be showing that to you in uh, the second of these four part videos. But this is part one um, where we're going to show you how to initialize it. Uh, but just to give you a bit more of an, a, an overview of what happens here. Um, when we connect to a video hub, we have to download or it down, automatically downloads all the data from the video hub, which we then can use in our, um, in our um, operation. And of course, some of the things that we need to know is that we need to know the, the labels. These are the labels as displayed on the Telnet. We'll we'll cover that how you can how you can do that. Um, but I'm just going to quickly show you um, the connection to the video hub. And there's something I need to point out here: the connection to the video hub uh, in in the traditional uh, controller that's built in here uses a Ethernet card based on a thing called the W5100 chip or IC and that um, is the device that connects the um, the network cable um, to either the ATEM or uh, and uh, to the hub. Now of course when you're using uh, this to control an ATEM and a um, video hub 
you need a, you need a router because it's got to need all those extra connections, ex, extra network connections. But what I want to bring here, bring out here, is that here is um, this is this is the intestines of um, this little fella here at the moment. I've just got it out here. Now on top of this this here, this is the older ones. You can see that there's a Ethernet board or network card, or they call them a shield which then goes out to the network and does all the control. Now this board here is called uh, is a W5100 board. Now that particular board, I'm just, while I'm talking, I'm just looking for um, the Ethermega um, solutions that I have. Anyhow, I have one around here. The Ethermega is much the same as this, except that this particular board is built into the main board. Um, and it's also got a W5100 um, chip on it for doing the network now here's a another board this is this is similar but it's actually got a double a w5200 chipset on it now the w51 board uh, is inherently slow it's okay for talking to the atem but when you need to do really high speed data in and out it's it's Really slow, and you'll you'll see that. I'll give you an example of that. But for this for this um, demonstration, I'm going to be using the W51 board, but in the next three demonstrations following, I will be using um, the 52 W5200 board. But there's also another one called the W5500 board, which I shall um, remove from its packaging. Um, it's it's much the same. It just connects on top of the. Um, sorry about the rough video here, but that's what I'm about. Hang on, we're going to black. So that's the W5500 board, uh, and again, um, this is this is much higher speed. In fact, it's 20 times faster. Um, both both these boards are 20 times faster than W5100. So you have the option of, of um, changing this board over. If you do want to use a 5100, sorry, a 5200 or a 5500, you need to um, use um, different firmware for the for the GVG. Which just let me know what you want, and I can um, make that up for you. Um, but as I said, the if if you're happy with what you're going to see with the 5100, well then there's no need to upgrade because um, these these boards here are about 10 times the price of this fellow here. Anyhow, so now I'm going to go straight to the point. I'm going to show you how to do the initialization, uh, meaning how to set the IP address of the um, video hub. Now, the way this works is that uh, if when it powers up, if when the, the panel powers up, it sees there's an IP address set for the video hub, the first thing it does is check to see whether the first of the four digits of the IP address are the same as the ATEM and as the same of its own panel address. If it's not, it'll ignore the video hub. This makes for fast booting up uh, in case you've got a video hub installation. Um, if that didn't make sense, um, email me and I'll explain it a bit better. But so, to enter into the video hub initialization, um, we have to set press our finger on the shift button while we're on color one, two. I'm going to do this one hand, I'm going to go shift and then pattern 8. You take your hold down the shift, press pattern 8, take your finger off pattern 8, and then wait for a second and then take your finger off the shift button. Um, and it'll then start, it'll show you immediately what the, um, the IP address is of the video hub. Now in here, I have it set to, as I said, I've got two video hubs on this, on my system at the moment. Um, the video, the work group video hub I've got sitting on 182, which is the fourth uh, number of the IP address. The um, broadcast video hub I have, which is a 72 by 144, um, is uh, on uh, fourth IP address 121. So I just press shift to be able to change it and change the numbers. Here, let's focus so you don't hurt your eyes. And we're just going to go 121. One, two, one. Now, before I hit enter on this, it's going to explain something to you. So, as soon as I hit the, as soon as I hit the enter, uh, I can hit shift now just to go and check them. Um, so, there's the one nine two one sixty eight two one two one. Before I hit enter to accept it, 
Um, you might, no might notice that this is flashing fast, indicate that we're actually doing a, the initialization of the panel. So, um, so what's going to happen as soon as I hit um, enter, it's then going to uh, disconnect whatever video hub is currently connected and then try and connect to this new one. Um, now I do have one connected to there so we won't have any problem with it connecting but what it does is it will then go into uh, a data dump out of the video hub into the panel into the into the, the memory of the panel which in this case is on the SD card and then that way it will just be able to access all that data um, instantaneous once in normal operation but because of the W51 chipset on this board it's a bit slow when I say a bit slow for uh, a 72 by 144 uh, it can take up to 20 seconds to load all that data in but as it's loading you'll notice the display and I'm going to hit enter now and I'll explain to you what's happening here so we're hitting enter and now you can see it's counting up and these counting up blocks it says block one and this is block two and then it starts on block three and then block four and then once it's done all four blocks and sometimes it might even go into block five depending on how big the file is uh, it then can, does all the internal configuration and then once it does that it's then starting up now one of the things you've got to understand here is that th this data dump occurs every time you power up the panel so um, you can see now that the panel is working okay. I suppose you, people get sick of me using the diamond wipe all the time. Why don't I just change it just for this video? There you go. Let's go over to uh, a circle wipe. Circle wipe is a circle wipe. Okay. So um, so that's me just controlling the panel. So the panel is now working all normal uh, as per normal. But now we have control. We can now control the video hub, which in part two I'll be showing you how to do that. Um, the uh, interesting thing here that you need to see is that because I've changed that to a, a much larger video hub, I'm going to now go back to the workgroup video hub and you'll see it's a lot quicker um, to do the data dump. Um, and um, so most people who are you know, running video hubs on in field are normally 16 by 16s or something small, so it's not really that big a deal. Um, so again, we're just going to um, go, while well, we're in color one, two mode, we're going to go to um, shift button eight, take your finger off the eight, hold the shift down, and then take your finger off. And now I'm going to go back over here, let's hit a focus, change this, the fourth number to 182 for memory, 182, um, enter one, fingers in the way, can't see what I'm doing, can you? One eight two um, shift. Now you watch how quick this is. Um, it's certainly not bla blazingly fast as the W fifty two and the W fifty five boards are, but uh, it's still much faster using a smaller hub. So now I'm going to hit enter, and um, you'll see there's the first block loading in, and because it's so small, there is only one block, and, um, and it does the configuration is doing the configurations now and now it's just doing the connection there it is and then we can then do our normal business with the fader and you're all up and running again um, so um, in part two which um, i will be making immediately after i finish this part here we will be looking at how to actually use the panel to switch sources on the video hub Part three, we'll be talking about how to um, allocate um, the 20 cross points, which is these 10 on the key bus plus shifted 10 as 20. You can allocate um, your own preference of video hub uh, sources as per destinations. Um, so you can then cut on your key bus, you can cut your video hub um, sources at will. Part four, um, just looking at my notes here. Part four, we're going to be talking about how to use or how to set up um, a video hub to follow the key bus so that for you people with um, TVSs where you don't have a dedicated video output for preview, 
you can then use a video hub uh, destination um, that will automatically follow the 20 buttons that you have allocated um, on your uh, preview row. I hope that makes sense. Be back soon. Bye.